If I were to ask you to define what sin is, what kind of definition would you give me? You'd probably tell me something like sin is doing bad things since 1 John 3 verse 4 says sin is the transgression of the law. Today I'm going to show you that sin is not about doing bad things and has nothing whatsoever to do with behavior. Even though when we think of transgressing the law, the first thing most of us think about is bad deeds. If we read 1 John 3 verse 4 in the NIV version, it says that everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. At first glance this verse seems to define sin as disobedience or breaking God's law. But how did Jesus summarize the law? Matthew 22 verses 37 to 40, Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Okay so here Jesus summarized the law as love God and love your neighbor. Now Romans 13 verse 10 says, love is the fulfillment of the law. So Jesus and Paul both summarized the law as love, or love fulfills the law. Now if we take a look at 1 John 4 verse 8, John says that he who does not love does not know God, for God is love. So here's a summary of what we got so far. Sin is lawlessness, love is the fulfillment of the law, and God is love. Now, I'm no mathematician, but I learned that, if A equals B, and B equals C, then A equals C. It's called the transitive property of equality. So based on this transitive property, let's let A equals to the law, B equals love, and C equals God. If the law equals love, which is what Jesus and Paul said, and love equals God, which is what John said, then God would have to equal to law. Do you see the logic there? Now this shouldn't be a stretch for most of us because we know that the law is simply a reflection or transcript of God's character. So this should be an easy thing for us to accept. So at its core then, lawlessness, is actually the same as godlessness, since God equals law. Therefore, sin is not breaking laws, but rather, a broken relationship with God. The core issue in sin is not being bad, but endeavoring to live life apart from Jesus, to separate from him. And this is important because if I'm defining sin as breaking the rules, then the way I would try to overcome sin is by keeping the rules, and it would be impossible to have assurance of salvation that way. But if I'm defining sin as living life outside of a personal relationship with Jesus, then the way I would try to overcome sin is by working on becoming closer and closer to Jesus. I would change my focus from rules to ruler, from behavior to savior. Just think about it, how did sin originate? Sin did not begin with Lucifer stealing mangoes from the tree of life. Sin originated when Lucifer said I will exalt my throne above God, I will be exalted, I will be above him, I will do it myself. Lucifer started the sin problem by endeavoring to live life on his own apart from God. He later wrote a song called I Did It My Way. Bunch of people been singing it ever since. So sin is living life or attempting to live life apart from an abiding, personal, daily relationship with Jesus. Now, one thing I've noticed is that we have been taking 1 John 3 verse 4 out of context for decades. We've twisted it to make it seem like it's talking about keeping the rules and staying out of trouble. Here's 1 John 3 verse 4 in context. Whosoever committeth sin, okay now whatever happens next in this verse follows having already committed sin. Now, whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. Notice how transgression of the law wasn't the sin. They sinned, and ended up breaking the law as well. Sin came before breaking the law. Breaking the law was a result of sin. If I'm attempting to live my life apart from a personal abiding daily relationship with Jesus, it's very likely that I might misbehave as well, but my misbehavior is not the sin, my living life apart from Jesus is the sin, and the misbehavior was the byproduct of me attempting to live life apart from him. Now here's the full verse, whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. If you were to ask some Greek and Hebrew experts who specialized in biblical languages to translate 1 John 3 verse 4 as accurately and carefully as they could into English, this is the answer they would give you. Whosoever committeth sin, or lives their life apart from Jesus, transgresseth also the law. For sin, living life apart from Jesus, results in the transgression of the law. So you don't get rid of sin by fixing your behavior. You get rid of sin by living your life in a personal and meaningful relationship with Jesus day by day. As a matter of fact, if you're defining sin as breaking the rules, you'll have a lot of problems with scriptures that just won't make sense. Romans 6 verse 23 for example. For the wages of sin is death. If you're defining sin as breaking the rules, then this is how you'll have to read it. Break the rules, and God will kill you. Now is that a picture of God you'd love to clutch to your heart and share with your neighbors and friends? That's a picture full of fear, 
But that's what you're stuck with if your defining sin is breaking the rules. But if your defining sin is a broken relationship with Jesus, those very same scriptures become a piece of cake. Acts 17 verse 28, for in him we live and move and have our being. That's just another way of saying, God is our life support system. Jeremiah 2 verse 19, your wickedness will bring its own punishment. You will see what an evil, bitter thing it is to abandon the Lord your God. So what's the definition of sin or wickedness in this scripture? Abandoning the Lord your God, and that is a relational definition of sin. If you sin, or live your life apart from a relationship with Jesus, you will see how your wickedness brings its own punishment. If God is our life support system, and if sin is endeavoring to live life without him, then sin is cutting the cord to life support, and the inevitable result is death. And the Bible is full of God saying don't pull the cord. I only want them to turn from their wicked ways so they can live. Turn from your wickedness, O people of Israel, why should you die? I take no pleasure in the death of wicked people. Now is that a picture of God you'd love to clutch to your heart and share with your neighbors and friends? It sure is. Now Romans 14 verse 23 says, Everything that does not come from faith is sin. Anything that was done outside of a meaningful personal daily relationship with Jesus is sin. Then guess what? I am living in sin even though I've never misbehaved. Mercy. Have mercy all right. 1 John 3 verse 6, Whoever abides in him does not sin. If whoever abides in him does not sin, then sin would have to be not abiding in him. John 15 verse 5, He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Jesus does not command us to obey, he commands us to abide in him because Jesus knows that abiding produces fruit, but obeying doesn't. If I focus on Jesus daily, he will be the one reproducing in me his own character and change my behavior. If you are spending time with Jesus, sitting on the three-legged stool daily, then you will not be living in sin, and you'll have a relationship with Jesus. And if you have a relationship with Jesus, you have the Son, and if you have the Son, then you have eternal life.